Hi everybody, it's David Hoyt here from Elastic, Observability Solutions Director. I just wanted to uh, do a little follow-up video on the Java manual instrumentation with OpenTelemetry. There's a few extra little bits and pieces that I did that may interest you. So let's dive back into the code. So remember, we've got our code here that essentially does a little bit of work um, with uh, Redis, goes and gets some favorites. Uh, and also, I just wanted to show you the actual website that we're, we're developing that has uh, the end-to-end -end application, right? So here we've got Elastiflex, and uh, the favorite service which we've written in Java is this bit here where we can, like, remove a favorite, add a favorite, and then the information for that goes into a Redis database. So the Java service for that looks like this. We've got a, a Spring Boot application. We've got Redis here, uh, and we've actually essentially created some uh, you know connection config for redis here and the things i wanted to just follow up on but there are a couple of things that um i thought were quite useful for this spring application now one is i implemented a tracing filter and what this does is is that every time there's a request to the favorite service we can actually strip out the information about uh the uh, the span that might already be in the header for the request because the request might have come from a downstream service which is also using open telemetry and in fact if we look in elastic we actually know that that's the case so if we look at the service map we can actually see in here that the node server is making a connection to our java server so in order for this little line to come up between the node server and java server we've got to actually read the information about the span that's coming in on the header from the node server. And so in order to do that, we implement this tracing filter. So like I said, what happens is every request to the favorite service goes through a filter, which is a common thing that you can do with Java in uh, serverlet technology. And uh, every request goes through this filter. And what we do is, is we strip out that header uh, using some helper methods, which uh, OpenTelemetry have kindly provided for us. So you can see this extract method here, which takes the request in and will actually strip out the headers that tell us about the spans and the source of the ser service or the source of the request where it came from. So every time a request is made in here from the node server, a little bit of extra information goes into that request, which we then strip off in the Java application and start a span. That way, like I said, we get this nice wiggly line in here and we can actually see the transaction from beginning to end. So that's something that we, we implemented here in this Java service. So, you know, again, if you want to see the code for this, have a look in the GitHub repository below. The other thing I added, which you'll have a look at in the, in the API here, is we make this backend call to Redis, and I want that to show up as a, a wiggly line to Redis here, right? So that's another thing I want to do. And so what I did was, was I separated out the Redis backend calls, and you can see here that what we do is, is we create a span just for that backend call, and then we can actually see how long it takes as well. We set the span kind as client, which is very important for this. We give it a name, and then we set some attributes on here. This one's particularly important, the DB system here and the host. So that's how it's going to identify that uh, on here, it's the same Redis instance that I'm connecting to from both the automatic instrumentation and the manual instrumentation that I'm showing you here. So that's how we create a backend call. And this is how we use a filter to strip out the information about the, the upstream system that sent the request, right? So that we can continue the request and actually see end to end what's happening with the transaction. And so the end result of doing both of those things is that if I go to traces, uh, I can actually see essentially from here, you can see, uh, all the downstream systems that are involved in that request. So you can see actually here, Java favorite hotel, .NET or hotel, 
and you can see all the requests, including the Redis database calls. Now it alternately goes from a, a manual to an automatic. So let's actually show you one where we actually see the manual instrumentation. So if I click on favorites here, you can see there's the favorites, endpoint, handle post, and then the Redis requests that I actually made within the uh, the code there. That's basically what this uh, this little piece of code that defines the back end and the span for the back end has caused to happen. Right. So now I can see exactly how long these Redis requests take. So yes, it's that simple really. And you can actually see, you know, even a little service map in here of how that works out. We can see the upstream call and we can go to the node server and things like that. So we can trace the request all the way through uh, using those two techniques, the backend call to Redis we're, we're defining here, and then the tracing filter, which strips out the information from the upstream request so that we can ensure that the, the transaction continues. So for a specific transaction, all the way from the user's interaction on the front end here, when I click add to favorites, we can trace that transaction all, all the way from the browser that I'm looking at on the screen here, all the way down to the backend database, the Redis database, just by adding these little extra bits of instrumentation into our, our code here. So that's all I wanted to show you. And uh, hopefully that helps you a little bit more with uh, instrumenting Java applications with OpenTelemetry and doing so in a manual way. Thanks very much, everybody. Be sure to check out the following blog posts and documents. Uh, you can just scan the QR codes if you want to see about getting started with Elastic Observability or you want to see about getting started with Elastic Open Telemetry. These are a good resources to go and look at. Thanks very much.